All right, jumping around a little bit to keep some interest in here. Um, what I want to show you now is something in Hypershade that you can do uh, that doesn't relate to material. So we're going to have to set up the scene. Okay, now follow along pretty close. What I need is a camera that's under rendering. Let's just take that camera. I'm going to position it back some. Need some thing in the camera so to render out a ball. Now I won't be able to see this correlating to what it looks like inside the camera. So what I'm going to do is take this panel right here, go to panels, and go to camera one. That way when I'm moving the ball, I can see where in space that is. Okay. Gonna put another one out there. And I'm going to turn on a thing called film gate. That way I know exactly if it's going to be in frame or not. So I'm going to set this one back. I'm going to set this one way back there, but still in view. Okay, and last, I need one more big, huge sphere to contain this all in. About like that. Something so it shows off into the background. Okay, good. Now, here's what it all looks like. Uh, so, if I hit six on the keyboard, I have a camera and three spheres. Okay, now what I want to do here is measure out the area at which this comes in contact with this. Okay, so I'm going to move this one back just a little bit so it's on the, it's on the actual um, grid. So how I measure something with that is create measure tools, distance. All right, now if I hit X on the keyboard, it will snap when I click on something. So this is snapping to the grid. So 20. Okay, and what measurement you're going to ask is that? Well, that is under preferences, settings, it's in centimeters, okay? Now, it doesn't really matter if it's in decameters, whammeters, or whatever you want to measure it. It's just 20 for right now. So everything follows in the same suit right now in centimeters. By the way, those other ones don't exist. Don't look them up on Wikipedia or anything. All right, so here we go. Now what I'm going to do is take my camera and I'm going to go down to the timeline and hit S because what will happen is, let's say I move the camera. Oops. Well, if I come down here to the time slider, I could just go like that and it snaps right back into place. So that's a good way to position your camera so you don't screw it up. All right, let's look at Hypershade for a second. Okay, in Hypershade, guess what's in here? Cameras. Well, there's my one camera that I just made. Well, what can I do with that? Well, over here, there is a series of lenses you can attach to your camera. <laughs> yeah, it's that good, right? I would want the typical depth of field look. Okay, so middle mouse button, click and drag. Middle mouse button, click and drag this one over here to default. And there we go. I just put a new lens on my camera. Okay, now, the lens. Well, here we go. So, it reaches like this. Uh, I'm going to put a negative 20 here. Why? Because I've measured out 20 on here. Why negative, right? Well, okay. If you look at here, if you click on this sphere... It's within the negative axes of the world. I know that because if I click on the sphere, um, I can get a good measuring point, and this is Z, so this is negative Z. Okay, next, let's go into render settings. I want mental ray, I want good quality,
So I'm going to choose production quality on this one. Okay. And if you want it to turn out really nice, you might, might want to add uh, some more resolution to this because uh, the resolution on the 640 by 480 right now it's at 72 dots per inch. Um, I like the small of this, the 640 by 480, but for this I'm going to say 150. Okay, and then we go in camera one, we see this, and I'm going to hit render. That's not what I rendered last time. There we go. All right, so this is what we have. Now what I want to do is show you why it didn't work. So let's go in here. Let's change this to a positive 20. There we go. Um, it had nothing to do with the positive or negative. I'm going to put the negative back. It had to do with the fact I don't have any lights in the scene. So what I'm going to do here is choose rendering, choose a directional light, and take that directional light and point it s just a little bit that way. So if I hit 7 on the keyboard, I could see that. There we go, depth of field. So I got my frontal, I got my back, and this is the one I actually focused in on. Isn't that cool? Now I know that's a very simple way to show it, but that, my friend, is so powerful that it's pathetic. Because that depth of field, yep, uh, area of interest, 